Praise the Lord, God bless you. Praise the Lord, God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart loads on Bobby Jones Expressway in the State 520 heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Sunday morning service, amen, along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole, and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly. My brother, Minister Harry Evans. And we want to continue to remember his wife, Sister Beverly Connie Evans, who went on to be with the Lord on March the 4th of last year. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her. We're nothing without her. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for joining my sister church. Amen. Spirit of Liberty's ministries. Amen. They have services. Amen. Every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. You ought to join them and be blessed. My friend, Pastor King, is on vacation, so he'll not be having services this week and probably not next Sunday either. So on Tuesday night, I will have a service. Amen. To take up for the gap. Amen. So we'll have services Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Sunday, amen, in the name of Jesus. But when he gets back, amen, you ought to join him, amen. He be, should be able to have his service the following Tuesday in the name of Jesus at 7 p.m. Then he'll be back before you again next Sunday after the Sunday coming up, amen, at 8 a.m. Hallelujah. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube. There are over 365 messages on my YouTube channel. In the name of Jesus, join them and be blessed. God bless you, Pastor King. I love you, my friend. I pray that you and Sister King have a marvelous, beautiful, wonderful, blessed vacation. You are so deserving of it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our whole service is Tuesday night like we discussed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Join me on YouTube. Join me on YouTube every in every day. You can join me on YouTube every day. Hallelujah. Just type in Roderick Bread, hit the search button, and that picture will come up with me in that white shirt. You can watch all the messages you want. Over 365 of them in the name of Jesus. Today's message, amen. Today's teaching part two from Thursday night. Part two of Christ, the divine life of God. Hallelujah. You need it. If you have any, if you have any, any choice, if you have any desire to make it into the second eternity, then you're going to have to possess Christ, the divine life of God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us go before the Lord with a word of prayer, and then we will begin this part two of Christ, the divine life of God. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for Another opportunity to come before your presence and to tell you that we love you because we do. We're nothing without you, but we're everything with you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Blood still running warm in our veins. Still running warm in the ones we love. Veins. Oh God, we love you today. And more than anything, God, we want to thank you for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Oh God, we thank you. God, we thank you more than anything that your word has nothing to do with how we feel, but everything with what we believe. All we got to do is believe without feelings even being involved and we should be able to live a victorious life down here on planet Earth. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Christ, the divine life of God. Hallelujah. Part two. 
We're going to pick up where we left on part one, amen, with Hosea 4 and 6. And Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. For lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. Thou hast, my people, for lack of knowledge. What is that? That means that, that the, the lack of the understanding the Christ life, the lack of understanding what Jesus came, died, and rose again for, the purpose of Jesus' is death, burial, and resurrection. The people of God, born again, water baptized, are destroyed because they lack the knowledge of what death, burial, and resurrection means. And the reason why they're destroyed because they like that is because they reject it. What they rejected, they reject everything that the gospel has to say about. Notice I said what the gospel has to say, not what a pastor has to say, what, not what a man or woman that say God called them has to say. In the, but what the gospel has to say, what the gospel has to say, apart from Pastor Red even teaching it, the gospel speaks for itself. Pastor King, but the gospel speaks for itself. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. People have got to stop rejecting Christ, the divine life of God. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve's decision to eat of the tree that the Lord God said for them not to eat from is proof that they rejected Christ, the divine life of God. Christ is the divine life of God. The tree of life symbolized the divine life of God, which was Christ. Adam and Eve's decision to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that the Lord God said for them not to eat from is proof that they rejected the divine life of God, the Christ life. When we refuse to live, here we go, this is us. When we refuse to live, see, 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 because Pastor King, we don't reject it. They don't, because, of, because if they would have rejected it, then they would have never went down in water baptism. If they would have rejected it, then they would they wouldn't, they wouldn't call themselves Christians. If they rejected it, they wouldn't say they were saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. They wouldn't say they was Baptist. They wouldn't say they church of God in Christ. They wouldn't say they Methodist. So they haven't rejected it, but they refuse to live in the vine. They refuse to live in the vine, and when you refuse to live in the vine, that is proof that we have also rejected the divine life. If you're not going to live in, if you're not going to live in the vine, because he calls us branches. So if you're so if you're a branch in the divine life of God, and you're living according to the course of this world, then that means you have rejected the divine life of God. I don't care what you say. Your life is a testimony to where you spend your life at. And when we as born again believers refuse to live in the vine, and we know John 15 and 5 says, he says, I'm the vine, you the branches, apart from me you can do nothing. When we refuse to live in the vine, that is proof that we have also rejected Christ, the divine life of God. Well, where, here we go, Pastor King, I'm finna start teaching. Well, where are we living then? If we're not living in Christ, because our, our foundation of verse it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, but old all things have become new. Okay, then, well, where are we living then? In two places. As I was studying this message, as I was spending the time with God, God says they're living in two places. They're living in wealth or man-made organizations. But it doesn't matter 
because both belong to the world. If you ain't living in the vine, that means that you're rejecting Christ, the divine life of God, and the reason why you're doing it is because you choose to live in two places, in wealth or in man-made organizations. The rich young ruler chose to live in wealth. Hallelujah. Saul, before he became the apostle Paul, chose to live in the law of Moses. Doesn't matter because both belong to the world. When we reject Christ, we are rejecting the life. Hear me now. We are rejecting the life of the first eternity as well as the second eternity. Why? Mainly for wealth. Mainly for wealth. Oh, I'm finna teach this word wealth today. Hallelujah. Wealth. What is wealth? What is wealth? Webster's Dictionary says wealth is an abundance of materials. It is in an abundance of material of a particular resource or nature. Abundance of material. I want to make sure we hold on to this word material because spiritual means non-material. So wealth is a bunch of non-spiritual stuff. But wealth is an abundance of carnal minded possessions. Proverbs 13 and 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity. What is vanity? Something that is valueless, empty, and void. An abundance of material. Gotten by something that is valueless, empty, or void shall be diminished, meaning it shall be made smaller or less. That is why he says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not that they don't have knowledge. See, lack of knowledge does not mean that you do not have. It means that it's been diminished. Your knowledge of Christ has been diminished by an abundance of material of a particular resource of nature. So an abundance of material of a particular resource or nature gotten by something that is valueless, empty, and void shall be diminished. But he that gathereth by labor shall increase. He that gathereth by labor. No, know ye not that your labor is not in vain. Your labor in Christ. Your labor in the vine. Your living in the vine is not increased. Is not, is not in vain. But it shall increase. He that gathereth by labor. You got to you got to believe you you got to labor in your faith in Christ. And if you do that, then you will increase in the land in the name of Jesus. The breath of life is a vanitous life without Christ, the living word of God. God never put himself inside of the breath of life. If you're only living by the breath of life, then you will not be able to live in the second eternity. You need Christ in order to make it into the second eternity. The breath of life will not take you into the second eternity. When you reject Christ, the divine life of God, you are rejecting the knowledge of the second eternity. You're rejecting the knowledge of the second eternity. Oh, y'all, I'm telling you, you got people, they think they know everything. You don't know nothing if you don't know Christ. To, when you don't know Christ, all you know 
is vanitous stuff. All you know is stuff of vanity, something that is valueless, empty, and void. God bless you, Sister Selena. I love you. Thank you for joining your pastor this morning. Sister Lena, when we reject Christ, the divine life of God, we are rejecting the knowledge of the second eternity. Hallelujah. Second eternity knowledge is spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge entitles knowledge of soul, knowledge of the self, knowledge of God, knowledge of the soul's relation with God. That is what spiritual knowledge entails. It, 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 it tells you about yourself. Spiritual knowledge is a mirror. If you take this mirror, your spirit will tell you about the individual that you see in it. But you probably won't believe it. Hallelujah. Spiritual knowledge entitles knowledge of self. The spiritual knowledge will tell you about yourself. You don't need Pastor Brett to tell you that. You already know you. You know you better than the only person that knows you better than you is Christ, the divine life of God. And how does Christ, the divine life of God, know? Because you would be in him. And if you're not in him, then he's going to tell you, I never knew you, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Spiritual knowledge gives you knowledge of yourself, knowledge of God, and knowledge of our relationship with God. That's what it does. The third, the inner thirst, here it is from part one, talking about that word thirst. The inner thirst, what is thirst? To desire strongly for something. The inner desire for strongly for something, the inner thirst of contentment and peace can only be satisfied by spiritual knowledge. You will not get any contentment, you will not find any peace outside of spiritual knowledge. You think you can. And so when you think you can find it outside of material, outside of spiritual knowledge, you then begin to seek material. You then begin to seek a wealth of material of a particular resource or nature rather than God. You look for salvation, you look for deliverance, you look for healing, you look for a contented life of peace outside of everything because you reject spiritual knowledge, the Christ life of God, the divine life. Believers are thirsting for eternal life. That's why we, that's why we become born again believers. Because we thirst for the life after death. We thirst for the, the life of unending existence. Believers are thirsting for eternal life, but they reject its spiritual knowledge. We thirst for Christ, but we reject the knowledge of it. And that's why God says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you reject knowledge. We reject the spiritual knowledge of the living word of God. And then we start looking for an abundance of material of a particular resource in nature to bring us peace in our life and we can, and you'll never find it. You'll never find it. 
Here we go, Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said. When God says something, it will bring you eternal life that will put you into the second eternity. The serpent said, have God said, you shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. God have said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, for God doth know. See, there it is right there. God, God knows. The serpent ain't lying here. This, he's actually telling Eve the truth. God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Meaning Adam and Eve never knew what good and evil was apart from that tree. All Adam and Eve knew was life. That's why I was saying in the other verse, a baby is born with life, but it has no knowledge. It only has life. And so life has to be fed into the baby. But, the, but, but life ain't being fed into the baby. A bunch of knowledge of this world is being fed. An abundance of, of a particular resource is what's being fed. And Pastor King, that's why the word says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. Because they are born into the world without knowledge. So when we get born again, we're born again without knowledge, but with Christ, the divine life of God. And so since we're born with Christ, the divine life of God, we should live in it and by it, for in him we live, move, and we have our being. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Eve saw wealth in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But God saw death in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Carnal knowledge sees wealth. Spiritual knowledge sees life. Which one do you want? Carnal knowledge sees death. Spiritual knowledge sees life. The death that carnal knowledge causes people to see makes them think that it's a wealthy resource, but it is not. It is not, it is, it is, a, it is a, a resource, a nature of death. Eve saw an abundance of ways, that's what wealth is, an abundance of material, of a particular resource of nature. Eve saw an abundance of ways to be as gods, to know good and evil above Christ, the divine life of God. Many believers today are no different. They're no different. They see an abundance of ways that's what Proverbs 14 and 12 says. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Because we see an abundance of ways to be as gods, to know good and evil above Christ, the divine life of God. Many believers today are no different. They live. See, they, they live what is live. They remain alive. To live means to remain alive. 
They lived their entire life on earth doing good deeds. What is deeds? Something that is done. They lived their entire life on earth. They remain alive their entire life on earth doing good deeds in the name of man-made organizations. There it is right there. In the name of man-made organizations. Did you know that a Baptist church is a man-made organization? Did you know that the Catholic church is a man-made organization? Did you know that a non-denominational church is a man-made organization? The human body is a man-made organism that needs Christ in it in order to live a victorious life in the world. The Baptist church needs Christ, the divine life of God in it, in order for his members to be victorious down there on earth. The church of God in Christ, the Methodist, the Catholic, every man-made organization. The, the Christ Our Life Ministries is a man-made organization made by me that I may minister the Christ life out of it. A lot of people are living their entire life on earth doing good deeds in the name of man-made organizations and not in the name of Jesus Christ. Deeds that they did not receive from spiritual knowledge but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You got a lot of born-again believers living their entire life on earth doing good deeds in the name of man-made organizations. You think I'm lying to you? But you know, you know the, 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 the Salvation Army does all these good deeds, but they don't do it in the name of Christ, Jesus Christ. The Masons don't do it in the name of Jesus Christ. They do it in the name of Masonry. The Shriners don't do it in the, they do it in the name of Shriners. NAACP don't do it. They do it in the name of the NAACP. Black Lives Matter don't do it. They do it in the name of Black Lives Matter. Doing good deeds as they think they are. Deeds that they did not receive from spiritual knowledge, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Apart from me, says Jesus in John 15 and 5, you can do nothing. Man-made organizations is a major reason for why many born-again believers will never know Christ, the divine life of God. It is the major reason why a lot of believers do not know Christ, the divine life of God. Why? Because they do a wealth of good deeds in their name and not only does the world promote them, but many of today's churches also. There is just too much mess too much mess taking place in the church today. It's too much mess. Too much mess taking place in the church today out of good deeds instead of out of spiritual knowledge. Mess that has caused many believers to reject Christ, the divine life of God. Mess that has brought large amounts of wealth to numerous ministries, but diminished, there it is, made smaller or less, but has diminished the lives of their church membership. 
It has diminished the lives. I'm telling you, the mess that's going on in the churches today, it, I mean, y'all don't hide it. Y'all put it on Facebook. Now Sister Selena, now Pascal, now you, you look on Facebook, you got, you got stupid people in church. Sister Selena, you got stupid people in church. Now they want to have wedding proposals during church services. You got stupid pastors letting men propose to their, I guess, girlfriends in church in the middle of church service and then the whole church just goes off just happy, happy, happy. And that is the time that the word of God is supposed to be ministered. You know, it's, it's bad. You know, I, I preach I preach for an hour. I, my, my ministry, my messages go for an hour. So for that hour, I ain't just a Selena, a bunch of clowns. So for that hour, I ain't got the time for, for you to be coming up to me as one of my members is saying, Hey, Pastor, do you mind if if today's service, well, um, my sister so-and-so is leading the, is singing a, a song, if I can come up and, and kneel down and uh, make a, oh, yes, Sister Selena, a bunch of entertainment, a bunch of mess. That's what, that's why, that's why a bunch of these ministries, their members' lives is diminished because we, because pastors are allowing foolish mess to take place during the time that the living word of God is supposed to be making its way into their breath of life. But the, but the living word of God can't make its way into their breath of life because when the people leave from church, the only thing they got to talk about is, Oh man, a deacon so and so proposed to, to sister so and so. Well, what was the word about? It wasn't about them because then, then, the, then the, the praise and worship service goes longer. You don't know how to, the praise and worship leader don't know how to shut it down, and, and then, the, and then the church is all caught up in the praise and worship. I'm gonna tell y'all something right now. God ain't thinking about no stupid praise and worship services. That y'all are having down there. He got the angels up there to give him praise and worship. At least they ain't full of sin. At least their lives ain't been diminished by stupidity. You know, but we, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, a lot of people are going to miss out on, on the second eternity. They're going to miss the second eternity because they rejected Christ, the divine life of God, because all they keep seeing is a bunch of foolishness. And you're exactly right, Pastor King. They are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because of the foolishness that's taking place in churches today that the definition of it calls wealth. An abundance of material of a particular, uh, you, you got you got all this material mess taking place during church services today. That God did not institute, but the pastors are doing everything to hold on to church members. I'm gonna tell you, the church, the churches are growing today, not because Christ is being lifted. He says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men under me. He's not being lifted up. Wealth is being lifted up. And when I say wealth, I'm not saying money. Wealth is being lifted up. An abundance of material of a particular resource. A bunch of wealth is being lifted up. Not a wealth of, I mean, you know, you, I mean, a, Christmas is uh, be here soon. They, they're going to start their stupid singing Christmas tree mess. They're going to have all these services to, to draw people in the church. And, and when they get there, they're going to talk about they're going to talk about the birth of Mary's baby. 
How many, how many, time, how many times are, are we going to look at, hear the message of the birth of Mary's baby? How many times? So people come into church and all they're hearing is a, a Savior was born. The Savior was born. The Savior was born. You ain't, you ain't, you rejecting him. You ain't living in him. Under us, a child is born. Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, all right, so uh, we, 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 that, that is, that should be preached every Sunday. We got so much mess taking place in churches today. An idiot gets up and takes off running. And then the whole church goes crazy. You didn't, you, but you didn't, he might run in church, but when he, when he gets in his house, he runs to every uh, TV channel that a child of God shouldn't be looking at. He might be running this in church, but he running his mouth talking about somebody. A bunch of mess, and y'all caught up in that mess. Joker, Joker, jump up. Woo, woo, Lord. And, and church is gone. Pastor say one thing. Y'all, y'all gone. He ain't said nothing. Said something that you can, that you can grasp with your carnal mind that has nothing to do with spirituality. Mess that has brought large amounts of wealth to numerous ministries, but diminished the lives of that church membership. People that say God called them in the ministry. People, I'm a, I'm a, I know people. I know some people, I'm going to tell you. They done went in the ministry solely for finances. Solely for finances. They get in there, they, 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 they teach that ties and offering to the top of the mountaintop. Because that's their way of seeking to gain wealth in this world. They care nothing about making sure that you receive Christ, the divine life of God. Oh yeah, Pastor King, financial gain. That's all they're looking for is financial gain. That's all they're looking for. You think, you not, not, Pastor King, you write me not for a soul. They care nothing about your soul. Because for a person to care about your soul, they have to be feeding you Christ, the divine life of God. When you go to a church service, you have got to make sure that you are of receiving the manna from on high. Not the manna that the children of Israel received from the, the, in the desert. I'm talking about the manna. The manna that we need, that the, the, that the, that the soul needs. See, see, the flesh needs physical manna. The soul needs spiritual manna. And we got church services today. We feeding a bunch of mess. See, I like that we're mess because in the military we don't call we don't call the dining facility the dining facility. We call it the mess hall. In the military the cafeteria it's called the mess hall. And in the church today, people are going into the church and, they were, and they're being fed a bunch of mess. Mess that has brought large amounts of wealth to numerous ministries, but has diminished the lives of their church membership. People that gave their life to the Lord because they're seeking eternal life. They're seeking the second eternity. 
And when they go there, all they're getting is a bunch of mess. Mess that <clears throat> organizations, man-made organizations, are exalting higher than they are the divine life of God. These churches are diminishing the lives of their church membership. Why? Because all they know <clears throat> is breath of life living. All they know is breath of life living. God never got into the breath of life. What got into the breath of life was the knowledge of good and evil, the knowledge of this world. Because all the ministries know is breath of life living. <clears throat> they talk the Christ life, but they don't know how to live the Christ life. All they know is breath of life living. <clears throat> but breath of life living is vanitous because it lacks Christ, the living word of God. Adam and Eve never put Christ, the divine life of God, into their breath. And that is why some of the mess that is being taught in today's churches, that is being spoken out of the mouth of men and women of God, is vanities. <clears throat> Why men of God will not allow the living word of God to get into their voice and condemn homosexual living, I don't know. Why they won't allow the living word of God to get into their breath and condemn the mess that's going on in the world today, I don't know. Because they call themselves men and women of God, and they churches have become very wealthy with material substance. In you got stupid church people that follow people that follow ministries based off of our sight rather than off of the living word of God that is being preached because they don't want to live the living word of God. They want to take up membership <clears throat> in these ministries Basically, no, number one, probably because of their skin color. They have no desire to seek the one that is able to get them into the second eternity. They have no desire to submit to God. If they had a desire to submit to God, you would see a change in their life. But you don't you you see them going to church now. But you see them doing more worldly mess than you see them doing kingdom living. They don't live the kingdom life like they live the worldly life. But you better not tell them they're not saved because if you do, then they'll say you're judging them. I judge nobody. What I do is I challenge you to buy you one of these mirrors right now. And then I want you to <clears throat> examine your own self. The Bible says examine yourself 
and see if you are in the faith. Examine yourself because I'm gonna tell you, 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 a lot of believers failing to understand, man, they're living a very vanitous life. Oh yeah, Pastor King, the mirror, my friend, the mirror will let you know how vanitous of a life you are living. It will let you know that the life that you are living is a valueless, empty, void life of Christ because you don't want to submit to the Word of God. And the reason why you don't want to submit to the Word of God is based probably because half of the people that you hang around don't submit. So you're just going to just hang on with them. Just like, how, why do you think only eight people got on Noah's Ark? Why do you think only eight people got on that? Because every, cause, cause everybody else thought Noah and, them, and the eight people which he made up. It was him and his wife and his two, three sons and their wives. Everybody thought that Noah and them seven souls with him were living vanities until that water did not stop falling. Everybody thought that them three Hebrew boys was living a vanitous life until they walked out of that fiery furnace. Living a vanitous life. The way to know if you're living a vanitous life is you're living for God. Something challenges the life of God that you're living. Out of fear, you stop living that life. If you challenge the life that you number know, you challenge the life that you live. Nobody challenges you. You challenge the life that you live. It was the three Hebrew boys, they could say they live for God, but they had to challenge that life. They had to challenge that life. They had to challenge that life. I challenge you to save me from this fiery furnace. I'm not going to doubt you. What Nebuchadnezzar and everybody saw when them three Hebrew boys came out of that fiery furnace, they saw a non-vanitous life. They saw a life that was full of spiritual living. Joseph's brothers saw that Joseph that them dreams that he was telling them about was not vanitous living. That's why God says, my word will not return unto me void. My word is not vanitous. My word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that for what I sent it to do. So if God has sent his word to you, it will accomplish what he sent it to do. If he does not, if it does not accomplish what he sent it to do, it is not the word's fault. It is your fault because you refuse to believe in the word. You got to believe that when you're drowning and I throw you a life vest, you got to believe that that life vest will keep you from drowning. You got to believe that. You got to believe that when I come here every Thursday and every Sunday to minister the living word of God, you got to believe that that word that I'm ministering to you is not a vanitous word. I tell you, you can, you can live a victorious life every day on planet earth if you will stop rejecting Christ 
the divine life of God. If you'll stop rejecting it. We need Christ, the divine life of God, in our breath in order to live in the second eternity. Do you have it or are you in him? You have got to really, really get serious about where you want to spend eternity at. You have got to get really, really concerned about how you're living today. Because you could die today. You could die today without Christ as your life. A lot of us, a lot of born again believers are going to die because they've been consumed in so much mess as born again believers. But that is not God's fault. Because if you would spend time in the living word of God, more that you spend time talking about your pastor or the church that you go to, then your faith will stop being diminished. Every time you look with your eyes and think spiritual in your mind there will always be a diminishing in your behavior I'm going to say that again I hope you write this down and never forget it whenever you are looking with your eyes in your spiritual in your mind there will be a diminishing in your faith. Eve looked with her eyes, but she was spiritual in her mind, but the eyes were stronger than the spirituality of her mind and so the spirituality of her mind began to diminish as her eyesight became stronger than what she believed. Is your eyesight stronger than what you believe? Because the three Hebrew boys' eyesight was not stronger than what they believed. Daniel's eyesight was not stronger than what he believed. Peter's eyesight was stronger than what he believed when he started walking on the water. Is your eyesight stronger than what you believe? Because if your eyesight is stronger than what you believe, then you lack the knowledge that Hosea 4 and 6 was talking about when it says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. What causes them to reject knowledge? Their eyesight. Because they can see an abundance of material of a particular resource that is stronger than what the word of God tells them. I am not a prisoner of what I see. I'm too busy believing with what the word of God has told me. We spend too much time meditating, pondering on the situation that we find ourselves in rather than on the fact 
that God will never leave you. And because you spend all this time focusing on the, the, the issue, your faith begins to diminish. And once your faith begins to diminish, God is going to say to you, Oh, ye of little faith, wherefore didst you doubt? God's greatest pleasure is to be believed. His greatest displeasure is to be doubted. Christ never doubted the Father. Therefore, we need Christ, the divine life of God, in our breath in order to live in the second eternity. Do you have Christ in you, the hope of glory? Do you live in him every day? What part of your life have you allowed to be diminished because of what you see rather than what the word of God has said? It was when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eye and the tree to be desired to make one wise that she took of it and ate. What is causing you to live every day knowing, here we go right here, this is the key word, knowing that you're not living up to the potential that God expects you to be living. And the reason why God expects you to be living up to that potential is because you have received his son as your life. And God is wanting to know what is diminishing the anointing in your life today. God wants to know why you can't get your emotions in check. He wants to know why you can't say no to things that go against his will when you're telling people that Christ is the Lord and Savior of your life. But you're living contrary to the words that are coming out of your mouth about yourself. God is giving us time to stop lying about the life that we live. He's giving us time. So every time you want to Somebody comes up to you and want to talk politics with you. You need to say, I don't talk politics. When they want to talk what's going on in the world of, of the race that you are, I don't talk race. When they want to talk all of this man-made holiday, Easter, Christmas mess, I don't talk holiday mess. Because all of that mess is vanitous, breath of life, living. You can stop living them lives. There's nothing so hard about not living them lives. The only reason why you can't stop living them lives is because you reject Christ, the divine life of God that does not live those. Christ, the divine 
life of God does not live those. I know that the entire world lives those. The entire world lives a lot of stuff. And God, look, watch this right here. Even Noah lived it. Don't think Noah was, was it? But the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See, so Noah had to find that grace. But it's grace, God's unmerited favor. You know, don't know, you know, you don't, you don't deserve, you don't deserve to be saved from the flood like nobody else. But I'm going to give you this grace. Because sin ain't stronger than sin. Sin is sin. You know, the Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Pastor Red is too, but Pastor Red, no, he still got sin. And so, but Noah chose not to live with the people that live by breath of life than that is living. So when the, the Lord started speaking to Noah, Noah began to live the divine life of God. And as Noah began to preach the divine life of God, only seven other people believed. I don't know how many people that you know that are going to make it into the second eternity that have been born again in Christ, that have been made a new creature, that all things have passed away, that behold all things have become new, that are going to make it into the second eternity. Do you live the surpassing excellence nature of God life? You know how you're living. This message is for you to check your lifestyle to see if you are actually living the divine life of God. Or if you're just living a church life. I'm going to church, but then after church, I'm going to get with my stupid family members and we're going to go party hardy. We're going to get drunk. We're going to, we're going to have fun together. We're going to be, we're going to just enjoy our family time together with family. You know what I mean? Families was in, enjoying their self time together when, as, uh, when Noah went into the ark. There are people that have went inside of Christ waiting on you to join them without coming in there and trying to pull them out to live worldliness with them. I won't do it. I won't do it. I, don't ask me to do nothing with you outside of the word of God. Not going to do it. Y'all have, we, you, y'all got to, y'all got to start saying no to people. You have got to start looking at the, your relationship with God stronger than you looking at your relationship with other humans. That, that thing gonna, gonna cause you to miss out on the second eternity. I'm saying God has given me the second eternity message. That means he's close. I mean, he's, he, he's close. He's close to ending this thing. He's close to shutting down time. He said, I'm about to take the eternity off pause. And all these people running around and saying that they saved, born, baptized, and 
saved again, they ain't. They ain't, and they're gonna miss. They're gonna miss out on eternity. All because here it is. All because they themselves of their own free will and accord reject Christ, the divine life of God. Nobody held a gun to nobody's head that did not get on the ark. Nobody held a gun to nobody's head to prevent them, to make them get into the fiery furnace or to not go. They chose of their own free will and accord to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar's statue. Their own free will and accord, they chose not to walk into the ark. Of their own free will and accord, they chose to crucify Jesus. Of your own free will and accord, you go out there to them Black Lives Matter marches. You, of your own free will, you choose to get caught up in the conversations that has nothing to do with Christ, the divine life of God. But you call yourself a Christian. You're playing around with the opportunity to live with God and his son and the Holy Ghost in the second eternity, but you don't value it as much as you value vanitous mess, valueless, void and empty mess that the enemy has got you thinking means something that you ain't even gonna take out of this world when you die. Thank you for joining me today. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, your word went forth. The people know that there are two things that's causing them to reject Christ, the divine life of God. Wealth and man-made organizations. Every time a born-again believer finds themselves fellowshipping with man-made organizations that are not lifting up the name of Jesus, I pray that this message convicts them. God, you are so merciful to us. Gracious you are to us. Oh, the way we spit in your face. But yet you still provide all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Even though we ain't thinking about you, you still think about us. What a mighty God we serve. We love you, Lord. Lord, we pray and ask that you would just get a little bit more fiery in our lives to burn off the infirmities in our flesh that causes us to reject Christ, the divine life of God. God, we want to spend eternity with you so bad. And Lord, we just pray and ask that you would give us the right spiritual leaders that care about our souls more than they care about our finances. God, we love you. Thank you for creating us. You did not have to create nothing, but you did, and you created us as your highest creation. And you created us for the purpose of us receiving your divine life. And now we keep doing this rejecting it. Forgive us, Father. 
we love you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me today. I'll be back before you Tuesday night at 7 p.m. with another word from God to try to make sure that you receive spiritual knowledge about the divine life of God, who is Christ, that, I'm, that I teach you something that without asking you for anything, I come to ask you for nothing. I bring to you the living word of God because that's what you need from Pastor Red. You need the living word of God. And I don't need you to give me no pastoral appreciation service. I don't need you to buy me no pastoral robes and, 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 and pay to buy me a, a car. I need you to receive the Christ life. You know why I need you to receive the Christ life? Because God, His Son, and the Holy Ghost, as well as I, we want somebody to be in the second eternity with us. Because that is the purpose for the second eternity. Because the first eternity had nothing created in the can, can you can you imagine having a having having a house, but the house is completely empty? That was what the first eternity was. Eternity is God's house, but there was nothing in it but God. And now God wants to move created things into eternity with him. But in order for that to happen, the created things must receive the divine life of God. And that is the Christ life. Do you have it? And if you don't have it, you need to find a, a ministry that does, a ministry that, that, that exalts Christ higher than its own name. A ministry that exalts Christ higher than its own pastor. Find you a ministry. Get to know Christ. Learn how to move and live and have your being in Christ so that when your earth suit finally has its meeting with death, that you have secured your place into the second eternity. God bless you. I love you. Amen and amen.